Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to look at a topic called TCP congestion control. Um, we're going to look at an algorithm which is generally known as AIMD, additive increase, multiplicatively decrease. And we're going to look at an example of TCP Tahoe based on the graph. We're going to cut all the stuff out and we're just going to look at the graph and we're going to learn and we're going to try to understand how does TCP congestion control works in terms of TCP DAO and then we're going to look at a newer version which is called TCP Reno. We know what is the cost of a condition in my in my network. First there's going to be a timeout all right so this is the first cost of your condition in my network. How does timeout occurs? I mean what is the reason of timeout? So let's say when you send a packet there's a timer that starts. If you receive an acknowledgement of that packet or a set of packets within that time period, we're good. And let's say if you receive a delay acknowledgement, if you don't receive an acknowledgement within that time period, what do you what does the sender do? Sender retransmit that packet again. And let's say if that act has been delayed and you receive that delay after that timeout has occurred, you're gonna still retransmit that packet, but receiver will end up with having a duplicate packets. Right? And sender will have duplicate acts as well. So, so, so timeout is the first thing, and the other thing is triple or three duplicate acts arrive. That could happen due to segment, uh, because you want to re-segment, you want to uh, 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 reorganize your segment, which is coming from your transport layer, if you're looking at it from the sender side. So you want to re reorder them, because this is a, reordering is also a job of your transport layer. It reorders your segments according to your segment numbers, sequence numbers, and things like that. So two things, timeout and duplicate acts. So what does TCP DAO does is this. It automatically sets a th certain threshold, right? And it's going to set up a certain threshold, let's say, and it's going to, that threshold is going to be based on contention window size. There's a term which is known as contention window size. Uh, that window size is going to define how many packets are being sent at once. So if that contention window is 6, you're going to send 6 packets and you're going to start a timer. And you know, within that timer, you're going to wait for their acknowledgement to receive, to get to, to receive at the center side. That's what contention window is. And we're going to say, we're going to, the, the terminology that is being used to understand TCP condition control is there's, there's a unit of a segment size, let's just call it 1MSS, right? So 1MSS is actually a segment size. This could be 1460 byte. We're just going to say it's just 1MSS, right? So how does this algorithm work? And there is also another term that we're going to use, which is known as SS threshold, right? SS means slow start. We're going to have a threshold. Uh, based on that threshold, we're going to see how this algorithm works. So let's say uh, we start sending packets. Well, of course, we're going to start off by sending a single packet. A single packet, we're just simply calling it 1MSS. That could be 1460 byte, 536 bytes, or 540 bytes. It doesn't matter. It's just 1MSS. And we're going to set up our threshold, right? So let's say we have ambitiously set our threshold to be 16, right? So this is our threshold, which is set to 16. All right, now what happens is this. Additive increase, multiplicatively decrease. So we're going to start sending one packet. Once I receive acknowledgement of this, this one packet, we're going to increase exponentially in that slow start region. What do I mean by that? Let's look at it. We start out sending one packet, one MSS. Then what is 2 raised to 0, 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3. Now let's look at it. So we're starting off with 1. Then what is the next packet that we're going to send? How many packets we will send next? We're going to send two packets. There's this 2 point. How many packets we're going to send next if we are receiving acknowledgement for all of them during the same time? We're going to send four packets. Then we're going to send how many packets? We're going to send eight packets, right? So this is an exponentially increase during that slow start mode. 
So this algorithm has two parts. One is a slow start phase, the other is congestion avoidance phase. So first we're going to look at in a slow start phase. We start off sending one. If we receive an acknowledgement, if there is no timeout, we're going to send two more packets after that, then four packets, then eight packets. So then what happens, let's say if timeout occurs. So we have sent just sent eight packets and all of a sudden timeout occurs. What do we do? We're going to make that, so we were sending eight packets, then we're going to drop this down, we're going to drop this down wherever we are. So we last, last packet that we have sent were eight packets. So we're going to make this threshold, which was ambitiously set to 16, but we, the last packets, the number of packets that we have sent previously were eight. So we're going to bring this down to four. We're going to, we're going to take a half of whatever we were. Wherever the timeout occurs, whatever the location was, however many packets we have sent, we're going to make it half. And we're going to call that our next threshold value. So the last packets that we were sent before the timeout were eight packets. So we're going to make our threshold half of that. So this is four now. And then we're going to bring this and then we're going to start off from one MSS again. Right? So that's the idea. The idea is in slow start mode, you start off, as soon as timeout occurs, you're going to make your threshold half of whatever your value was of your contention window value. You're going to bring this down to half, half of it, and then you're going to start off from one MSS. And then you're going to start that exponential slow start phase again. Now the slow start phase again was one, then you're going to send two packets, then four packets. Now your threshold was set to four packets. As soon as you hit your threshold mark, regardless of what happens, you're gonna start. You're gonna start a, con a congestion avoidance mode. In this mode, you're gonna increase your packet additively. Right? You're gonna increase your packet additively. So hence, this is where AI is coming from. Additive increase. AI is not generally known to be in a slow start region because slow start region is actually exponentially increasing it. But can AI comes in a region when you are when you hit that particular threshold value, which we did in this in in RTT five, you're gonna start your additive increase. So we were sending four packets, five packets, six packets. So what why we are in a condition of awareness mode? Instead of going exponentially, now we start going linearly by sending one packet at a time, one packet at a time, one packet at a time. Now in PCP Tahoe. So this continues until RTT 13. As soon as you, let's say you receive three uh, duplicate acts, the way Tao works, it takes timeout and three duplicate acts the same way. It will treat both of them as the same way. Even though timeout is the is the main culprit where your pack, packet get lost, but in TCP Tao, timeout and three duplicate acts were treated the same way. What it will do, wherever you were, as soon as you receive a triple, triple uh, three duplicate acts, you, your your contention window was 12. So it's going to make that window half, and it's going to set your threshold to 6 now. Once it's set your threshold to 6, and it will bring your MSS down, it's going to start off from one MSS again. Now, I hope you're getting it. As soon as it you see three duplicate acts, it will bring this down. So this is multiplicatively decreased. You're going to bring this down to one MSS, and then you're going to decrease. You're, you're going to you're going to take a half of your contention window size, which is actually 12 in this example. Take a half of it, and you will set your threshold to value six. All right. So you're going to bring this down to six, and then from here, from RTD 13, you're going to start that slow start phase again. You're going to start exponentially increasing it. So you have one two, four, and, and and as soon as you hit six, your threshold, you're going to change this into linear mode, which is going to be a condition avoidance mode. So that was TCP DAO. This is TCP DAO. This is how it works. It treats both timeout and triple, tri tri triple uh, duplicate acts as the same way. It brings your th uh, uh, threshold down. It takes a half of your contention window and make it as a new SS threshold value and it will start from one MSS. This is how it treats it. Even though triple 
pre-duplicate acts when you receive in a computer network is actually a mild condition. It's not. It should not be treated like this. That you bring your MSS, your you should bring your uh, uh, packet down to one MSS. It should because pre-duplicate, pre-duplicate, triple duplicate acts are considered to be a mild condition in your network. So this problem is being solved by TCP Tahoe in this way. So let's let's look at it. Still, you will have your slow start region, you will have your condition avoidance region, but fast retransmit, it actually added another feature which is known as fast retransmit, fast transmission or fast retransmit. So in this way, so in TCP condition control, in TCP Reno, uh, light condition, which we already said earlier, which means triple duplicate act, uh, they are being treated as the same in TCP Tahoe. In TCP Reno, it actually changes this because in TCP Reno, triple duplicate acts are considered to be a low condition. In, in any network, whenever you're receiving three triple duplicate acts, it, you're, you're considering it's a low condition. It's, it's not as harsh as a timeout condition. So in, uh, in TCP Reno, you have same thing. You have slow start region, you have condition avoidance region. They have include another region which is known as fast recovery or fast retransmit. So let's look at it closely. All right, so, so we still start off with our uh, slow start. In slow start, we start off with one MSS, then we start sending two packets, then we start sending four packets. As soon as you hit timeout again, so I was at 0, 08, which means that my contention window was 8. If if it was if I was to continuously go on, if, if I were to continuously go without any timeout. I should be changing into condition avoidance mode as soon as I hit my threshold because the next value, 2 raised to 3, then 2 raised to 4 is going to be 16. As soon as I hit this, even though there is no condition, there is no triple X, there is no um, timeout, I would go into condition avoidance mode because threshold is the guy, is the place where you would change your transition from one transition state from slow start state to your condition avoidance state regardless of if the condition took place, took place or not, either by timeout or either by duplicate acts. So, so as soon as I, I saw a timeout, I bring my threshold down, I bring my threshold value to half of this value, right? So this is half of, so we were at 8, so it will set my threshold to 4 and it will start off. In timeout, it will still it will treat TCP Reno, TCP Tahoe, both of them treat timeout as the same, which means half, uh, take a half of your contention window. This is going to be a new threshold value and start off with one MSS, and then you start the slow start region again. Now, I start off sending one packet, then two packet, and four packet because it has already hit my threshold value, which was four. So from 4, as soon as they hit that value, which is, is going to change into an AI, AI mode, which means additive increase. Now this mode is known as condition avoidance mode. So now this will take that condition avoidance. It will keep increasing it, keep increasing it until and unless you encounter duplicate acts. So now duplicate acts are considered to be a my condition in your network. So now what it will do, now Tahoe, TCP Tahoe, what it, what it was doing, whatever the value was your condition video window was, it was taking half of that, so it was 6, it was sending, uh, taking a threshold value to 6, and then starting off from that slow start region by taking these packets to, from 1 MSS, then 2, and then 4, and then 8, and then 16, and so on. But TCP Tahoe treats duplicate acts as a my condition, which it is in network. It's not something that TCP Reno does actually, it is due to my condition in network. So what it will do, it will make your threshold, it will take a half of whatever your contention window value was, which was which is now six, and it will add three extra packets to it and then start that fast recovery region. Okay, because this is confusing. When I was searching on internet, everyone was like, you know, giving different answers. So I just want to make it easier for everyone. Then how does this fast recovery or fast retransfer to state works in TCP Reno? Now let's look at it closely. So as soon as I hit duplicate X, my threshold value is set to 6. Why? Because I, my contention window size was 12. Now it's going to start, it's not going to start from 1 MSS. 
It's going to take that threshold value. All right. So what we were saying, as soon as a TCP Vino, you had duplicate acts, it will take your threshold value, make half of whatever your contention window was. In our case, it's 12. So now my threshold value is 6. And then it will add three more packets. All right. So in fast recovery, it will take, so in fast recovery mode, so it will take half contention window, half of that, plus it will add, add three MSS. So now my value was contention window was 12, so half of 12 is six plus three MSS. Six plus three MSS, it should be starting its fast recovery in terms of nine MSS. So now let's look at our packet size. So this is eight, and as soon as it, it recognizes the packet act, it's gonna start off from nine. This is the value of nine. So in this region, it's gonna. It's going to be similar to a slow start. It's gonna exponentially increase this. So now we are at nine. Uh, so then, then the next packet, and then all of a sudden more packets. As soon as a new acknowledgement received, which is not duplicate acknowledgement, it's gonna go out from that region. It's gonna go out from this uh, phase, which is a fast recovery phase. As soon as you increase, you receive new act. It will bring this packet down to its threshold value. Right, so let's say okay. Uh, so this is your fast recovery. As soon as you receive new, brand new act, it's not a duplicate act. It's some other act. It will go out from that fast recovery phase and it will go into congestion avoidance mode by reducing your thresh of your value to your threshold value, which is six, and then start increasing the packet additively, which means then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So in this way, uh, just like TCP DAO, which, which was quite aggressive, it was actually at, at duplicate X, it was actually break, ha, making your threshold half of your contention window, but starting off from one MSS, it actually brings your threshold down half of your contention window value, but add three MSSs and start your fast recovery mode. Until and unless it will go out from that fast recovery mode only when a new acknowledgement received, not duplicate new acknowledgement received, and it will make this windows, uh, it will go down to your threshold value and start your con congestion avoidance mode. So this is a brief uh, understanding of TCP congestion control. Just remember this because this was not clear. I just want to make this clear and make it easier. So this that's the difference between TCP DAO and TCP Reno. I hope you like this small tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and ask me in the comment section. I try to reply all the valid questions.